good afternoon. And uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered together here as a team. We are here for a purpose. Thank you for enabling us to log in. We pray for our facilitators to be strong enough good and to use good afternoon. And use him or use them to give us add value, add knowledge in what we don't know. And let's what we're going to learn be important in our daily lives, in our different hours of work, in our different departments, so that we may be more of value and important. We pray for a strong network. We pray for patience. We pray for clarity. And we pray for easy understanding. We denounce ourselves from the wings and the distress of Satan in this discussion. And we pray we give back glory and honor to the initiators of this program. May they always be strong and may they always be initiative enough to always come on board with the new things. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Barongo, for that powerful prayer. Once again, good afternoon. My name is Edward Tumwine. I'm the Training and Mentorship Manager at Ultimate Multimedia Consult. It's a pleasure to host you uh, this Friday again for another online training. Uh, these trainings are, in partnership, are done in partnership with the Department of Journalism and Communication of Bakere University. Uh, where we also facilitate short courses and uh, ranging from digital communication, multimedia journalism, digital pedagogy, and media and information literacy. If you are interested in applying for any of these courses, uh, feel Uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Barongo, for that prayer. My name is Edward Tumwine. I'm the Training and Mentorship Manager at Ultimate Multimedia Consult. It's a pleasure to host you for this uh, another training. Uh, these trainings are done in partnership uh, with uh, the Department of Journalism and Communication at Macquarie University. And um, we also offer short courses. We facilitate short courses in partnership with the department. And if you are interested in applying for any of the courses, uh, the link is in the chat, the first link. Uh, feel free to click and uh, select the course that you'd like to apply for. Uh, we, you can uh, study it both either physically or virtually. The choice is yours. Okay, uh, so we uh, have these sessions every Friday and uh, we are glad to have uh, this session on data visualization using Flourish. Um, in addition to uh, the short courses, we also have our WhatsApp group. Um, the link is also in the chat, uh, WhatsApp group where we share different training materials and resources, and also any other training opportunities. Feel free to click on the link in the chat to join the WhatsApp and Telegram group. We also, the Telegram group also serves the same purpose, okay? So if you are interested uh, in finding more learning materials, uh, resources, and even any upcoming training op opportunities, I would encourage you to click and join any of these uh, groups where we frequently share information. So at this point, I would like to introduce our facilitator of the day, uh, Miss Emma Laura Kisa, uh, who is a data analyst with Code of Code for Africa. Uh, she's also part of their Pan-African Knowledge Team and has uh, experience and work in the media and communication field for 13 years. Uh, she's also a Data for Change alumni, and we are very pleased to have her uh, facilitate this session. So without further ado, I would like to invite our facilitator, Mrs. Emma Laura, to take us for the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edward. Can you please confirm that you can hear me? Very well. Awesome. 
Uh, my greetings to us all. I am excited to be here with you today and for us to learn together. I'm going to start sharing my screen now and then we will continue. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. So, uh, Edward, please let me know when you can see it. Yeah, we can see. Awesome. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for making the time. Our session today is data visualization using Plourish. And um, those are our kind partners who have made all of this possible. And we are very grateful to them. That is me, as uh, Edward has introduced, my name is Emma Kisa. That's the short version. The long version is Emma Laura Namwanja Kisa. I am a data analyst with Code for Africa. I am born and raised Ugandan, but currently based in Eldoret, Kenya. Okay, so what are we going to be covering in this session? We're going to be looking at Flourish, as has been uh, mentioned, and we want to see why we recommend Flourish, how to sign in, how to use, the, how to see the dashboard and use it, how you can enter data, format a chart, and then uh, publish it in the end. So that is what we are looking forward to learning, and that is what we're going to be learning together in here. I know that. Edward shared a link earlier for you to uh, create an account in Flourish. I hope that we have done that, but if we have not done that, then we will be having a time later on to do that. So what do we want to have accomplished by the end of this training session? It's just one thing, not so many things. One thing that we want to have known is to demonstrate how to create, format and publish a chat on Flourish. So each one of us who is on right now will be able to, to do this by the end of the session, by the end of the time that we have together here, you'll be able to create a chart to format it and to publish it. Okay, then we shall jump into it. Uh, if you find that I am too fast or too slow, or you'd like me to repeat something, please type it in the chat and Edward will let me know about that. We are talking visualization today and it is not something you can just talk about. This session is going to be quite practical and we will, I will be expecting many of us to, if not all, to do something. So it's a practical session. Keep that in mind as we jump in. So visualization and uh, what to use. I'm going to start with just a, a small introduction about visualization, a small uh, talk about visualization. So it's the process of converting large amounts of data and making them visual. So we are transforming data to an accurate visual form. And this is the best form of uh, visual that that set of data requires. That is what basically data visualization is. We have a slight demonstration in the image over there where we have data in a chart and is transformed into that visual on the right. That's what we want to learn. So that it, this is because it will be easier to be understood. It's visualization makes complex, complex uh, numbers, complex uh, facts easier because of the visual form that is there. So data visualization is, it's different from infographics. So what we have on the screen right now are infographics, infographics combine text, illustrations, icons, data and data visualizations, as opposed to data visualizations being brief and just one component of, of a larger infographic. If you decide to use it in an infographic, or just one component that can be used, a chart or a map, 
that can be used in a story, in an article, in a report. So that is the small difference between infographics and what we'll be looking at today with the charts. We're looking at charts and we need to know the anatomy of a chart. So is it just the chart as is? That's not the whole thing for a chart to be a good chart and one that that communicates, it needs many things which we capture in the anatomy of a chart. So your chart has to have a title. It has uh, to have, it does not have to have a subtitle, but a title is very, very important. And uh, here we can see where they are in Flourish. And then we have a legend. We have a source and uh, a link to the source that uh, you, where you got that data. So as journalists and as communicators, we need to attribute, we need to always attribute because many a times the data we're going to be using is not our data, but we have got it from somewhere. So it's important to attribute and this will give authenticity to the work that we do if you write where you found the data and which year is the data from because that is important too. So that if we are saying that they are 20% females in, in your nation, we, we need to know which year that was. Was it in 2020 or in 1920? So that is very important. A logo is also important for you, especially for um, media houses. Then we have our axis. So we have the Y axis and the X axis. That in a nutshell is an anatomy of the chart. That's this slide, just a description of what, what I have uh, said. One of the things I had and talked about is a data label. If you feel like that your chart will be better with a data label, then include that as well. Some will not need data labels on the chart itself, especially if you have the legend up, but then other times you will have need of data labels. Okay, so we're looking at charts and we are talking about visualizations, but the, even in just the visualizations, there's so much you can do. There's so many types of charts, there's maps, there's uh, a number of uh, data visualizations that can be used from even just one single set of data. So you have to choose the right chart. You have to start from what, should, what would you like to show? So are you showing a comparison? And so comparison, if you look at the screen, we have categorical and time series. Are you showing a distribution? Do you want to show a relationship? Are you showing composition? So what we are looking at right now is your journey from this is the data I have, this is a story I want to tell, and then what is best, what is the best way I can show what I want to, to show. One thing I would like to say on this note is that if you have time series data, and this means data over the over years or over months, it's always advisable to use a line chart. So a line chart is the best for time series data, but uh, any other data that you have, you can start. And if you start out with a bar chart and along the way you think that this may not be working for me. It's, it's just changed to what will be working for you. So this is uh, choosing a right chart. There, there's a number of things to consider while choosing which chart you want to use. Okay, so we have maps and satellite imagery as well. All of this is also under Flourish. And these are geographic visualizations. So if you want to, if you, your data is uh, sensitive to the locations, you can use any of these, you use a map. There are lots of maps that Flourish offers, or you can use satellite imagery and Flourish has amazing sliders that show you a before and after of a place so that you can uh, consider that and visualize that if that is the way your storytelling is leaning. Okay, so that was a short, short introduction to visualization and a number of basics that, that we need to know. And now we will look at Flourish.
at this point, I want to say that there are lots of tools out there that we can use to visualize and not just lots of tools paid and unpaid for, paid and free. But then there's so many other tools that are <clears throat> free that you can find to use in visualizations. We, we have chosen Flourish for this session because of a number of reasons which I will talk about, but there are lots of, of tools out there to use. So let us keep that in mind as we continue. So why Flourish? Why have we chosen Flourish out of the many that are, have there, that are out there? So Flourish has powerful tools that can implement a number of principles. So it has pop-ups and interactivity. Interactivity is very important, especially if you are publishing for the web. It will not uh, come in handy if you're publishing for print, so you do not need interactivity on a page, but you can add a lot of interactivity in uh, a chat for online, which will, will capture the audience, which many people in the audience will be drawn to, and it will communicate more because of its interactivity. It also has pop-ups, so if you think of a chat, basically, any chat that pops up in your mind, there's just so much you can put in there. But because of the option of having the pop-ups, if you hover over it and hovering is when you get your cursor and just put it over wherever you are. If you hover over it, you have an option of having a lot more data, a lot more text that can come up in a pop-up. So that's one of the reasons Flourish is one of our best tools to use in visualization the ability to change HTML to achieve bold colored data. So you can just customize it in a number of ways using HTML that is uh, good for us, important if you need to, to tweak it and to make it really customized to you and your style. But also if you're in a media house, if you have a media house style, then that is easy to customize. Then embedding for responsiveness. This one is also one of the very, very good reasons we choose, we select Flourish. And it's because this would mean that if it's embedded on a website and it is embedded in, uh, on, and you're reading it on the desktop or on your phone, it will adjust. So that responsiveness is assured when you use Flourish. It is inbuilt, so that, that is very, very helpful. And uh, there's a possibility of creating Flourish stories. So stories is when you go beyond the chats and you create a whole story where you can put more than one chat, you can add images, you can add um, text. So as Flourish stories also gives this tool uh, a boost in recommendation. A disclaimer on, on Flourish is that they, they, there's regular updates on this. So every time you go in, you may find something new, something has been added, but there are all these updates that are happening will always be for the better. So if something has changed, it's because something better has been replaced. Okay, so we're going to just look at slides. I said earlier that Visualization is not something you talk about, it's something you do, and that's how you learn. But I will take us through a number of slides showing us how the tool looks like, then we'll go and create something. The, we will be using data, and uh, um, Edward will share that data in the chat, or some of you already have it, but it will be shared with us uh, a sheet, and that's the data we'll be using in our work. So when you go to Flourish, which is flourish.studio, it is linked over here, but for when you get these slides later on. However, you just go to flourish.studio, this is how it looks like, and you will put in your email and password. I know that some of us have done this already. When you sign in, there's a dashboard. This is what is called a dashboard. And uh, all the projects you have worked on will be here. All the charts you have created will be in this space. Now, if you have not yet created it, it will be empty. 
and just waiting for you to create your first chat. We look up here, there would be new visualization or new story. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you're starting here, you go, you will go to new visualization when you are starting out. And uh, I'll first show you how stories look like. This is stories. So we have new visualization and a new story. The story will look like this. As you can see to our left, there are, um, there are five little images where you can either put a chart, you can add text, you can add an image. And at the end of the day, when you publish it, you'll have one story, one story showing so many different aspects of that. When we go to the new visualization, it will take us to the templates. This is another thing that makes uh, Flourish a good one because it is very user-friendly. You have a number of templates that have been populated with data where you can start. So you do not have to start from scratch if you uh, don't want to. So a number of templates in there, you will choose which template you want to work with. And all you have to do is uh, remove the data that is in there and uh, include the data that you want to use. So quite user-friendly. The templates in there are not just the charts. We have um, scatter plots. We have maps as well, different types of maps, as we shall see going forward. Naming a visualization, we will look at how we are going to name it. And then we are going to look at how we are going to upload the data. Once we start that, there is a possibility of transposing data. We have any format that you're going to choose. So there's grouped columns and these can be trans transposed as well. We have single charts, uh, as you can see here, it's single chart and it has, it's a group, but then we can create it into a grid of charts. We have formatting. When we look at the right side of our screen, that is where we're going to be working from. So. The left side, the larger part of the screen is a preview for us to see what we are working with. But then on the right side is where we'll be working with both in the preview section when we are formatting or when we are working with the, the data section when we are putting in our data. I'm going through this first because we are going to do this practically so that we get that feel. And so that at the end of the day, we do have something we are going home with from Flourish. More Excuse on me. formatting. Yes. Uh, would you like maybe to, to mention what transposing means or it will be seen when we do it practically? Okay. Uh, I will mention it now and we can do it practically later. Transposing is when you feel that the, the data you have put in and the way you have put in is not as visual as you want it to be. So you will switch out the rows and the columns. So that's what transposing is. It's, it's, you'll find it in other times. So transposing is switching uh, the rows and the columns, switching them up. And in Flourish, it's so that you will visualize the data better so that the visual comes out better if it wasn't. We will see that later, but that is what it means. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. After we have done all of this, we have to publish because we are not doing this to just keep it in our, our lovely Flourish dashboard, but we will publish this and uh, in the top right corner of our screen where we will be working out of, there's the part to publish where you will export and publish it it gives a number of options so we can embed it or you can just download it as an image, download it as HTML, a number of options we will look at for how best we can publish our work. We will look at all this formatting as when we go in and uh, colors, colors are also part of how we are going to format and yes, so a lot in formatting, which we are going to look at. All these slides are in here so that when you have it, you can have a step-by-step -step 
for when I am not here talking over them, but we are going to be doing that. You can preview your visualization before you uh, publish it, but even after publishing, if you make any changes and republish, they will appear and you do not have to um, have a different link for that. We talked about the responsiveness, which we will also see going forward. Now, after this, it's enough of me talking. Now we are going to do, I am going to do first, but then each one of us is going to have time to go and create a chart from the data sets that we have. Before we do that, before we go into the practical, are there any questions that anyone has at this point? Questions can be put in the chat. You can put, raise your hand if you have a question at this time. But uh, moving into the practical session, questions can pop up anytime so that no one is left behind. Any question at this time? Going once, <laughs> going twice and sold. So let us now start practically. As I have said, I'll go first, but each one of us on here will, will I will expect us to, to go into Flourish and choose a visualized uh, data set from the ones that we have have prepared and then create a flourish chart, which is going to be simple, I promise. And we will all be here to talk ourselves through it. Okay, so I'm going to flourish now. The It's flourish.studio, there's a link you can follow. And this is how it would look like. Once you go to that place, then you go to the sign in option sign in or if you have not yet signed in you go to get started for free that's where you will sign up a very very swift way to do that uh, let's look at get started for free and the options that are there oh it has not allowed me to do that because i'm already signed in so if you you have not signed up you go to get started for free or sign up over here but if you are signed, if you have an account, you will go to sign in and that is where it will take you to your dashboard, as we said earlier. This here you can see projects that we have worked on before. And this is the dashboard, but we to get a visualization, we will go to new visualization. And uh, let us look at the templates that we have that uh, we have on offer. We have various chats over there. And then we have the maps, a projection map. So many types. So we have Africa, Argentina, US with uh, UK regions, US regions, so many options for maps. Then we have the scatter chats, scatter plots, 3D maps, and there's lots more. So we have a lot of options and it's going to depend on the data that we have. Having said that, let us look at the data. Edward, please share the data in the chat uh, for later for our, our people. But uh, in this data that we've shared, I have four different data sets. I'm going to just work with one. And uh, when it comes to for the time for you to do yours, you are going to choose whichever one works for you. Our first data set is uh, industry for persons in employment. So the percentage of people in employment broken down in a number of sectors, broken down by sex or uh, broken down by residents. That is one data set. The other data set we have is women in the news as sources in major news topics in Africa. And this is for print, radio and television. So that is another data set. We have data set number three has key natural hazards statistics in Uganda. So uh, you can either pick, pick your poison, which epidemic you want, drought, earthquake, flood, landslide or storms. 
in Uganda from 1980 to 2020. That's the data we have. And this is time series data. It's the one I mentioned earlier. Data set number four, what's behind door number four. So we have world population from 1950 to 2021. And this is really all the countries in the world. That means this is a very, very heavy data set. Okay, so in each of these sheets we have looked at, we have the source in there, a link to that data, and then the year it was made, the, the year the data was uh, created. In, and these are important because I talked about it earlier that we have to attribute and uh, it just gives authenticity to our work. And the year the data comes out is also important. I'm working with data set number two, no, data set number one, apologies. I'm working with this data set, data set one, and uh, when I look at it, I will have to decide what kind of visualization I should use. I'd like some suggestions in the chat. Okay, if you look at this data set, what visualization should we use? Please type in the chat and Edward will tell me the first one that pops up. Nothing yet. Emma, um, there's one from Sophia saying, sorry, from Sophie, bar chat. A bar chat. We are going to first go with first it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first come, first serve in this, our classroom. So mm -hmm. we are going to go with a bar chat. And uh, when we go back to our Flourish templates, there's a number of bar charts in here. We have the one that is grouped, proportion, but we will start with the budget. It's very simple today. Flourish is always simple. So once we get our template, it's loading. Remember I said it is pre-filled, pre-populated with data. So it already comes done. How do we get our own data in here? Flourish has two sides. So we have the preview side, which we are looking at, and then the data side where we put the data and tell the data what to do. Again, it's just the two buttons up there. We have the preview, what we'll be seeing, the data, where we put the data and what we tell it to do. Okay, so let's see preview. This is where we're seeing, but we want to bring in our data, which we have already looked at. So data side, it is two ways to bring in data. We can upload the data on the left, we write. On the right, we have upload data and you can just upload it from your machine if you have already downloaded it. It's always easier for me to copy and paste and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go back to our data and just copy and paste all of it in there. Okay. Oops. Um. I know that our kind Edward has given us a session on using sheets and how to copy and how to paste and all of that. And if he hasn't, he will take us through that. But I just copied and pasted with Control C. Control C is copy. That's what I did. And I come back to Flourish. And this is where I'm going to put it. I'll first delete everything by copying it all. <laughs> Control A and deleting that. And then I just paste what I have copied, Control V, Control V. Okay, highlighting everything. So copy and paste is the easiest for me, but if it's easier for you to have downloaded the table that you want, and then you upload it on upload data, then we're going to do what works for you. Right now, Okay, we have our rows mixed up, so we're going to make them better. We, because the reason it's mixed up because this first uh, cell was merged. So we know that the first column is male, then we have female, urban and rural. So I'm going to just move those over 
and there. And these are our titles, so they should be in the first line. I am just going to remove that first line. Please ask questions, type them in the chat. We'll come to them, raise up your hand and uh, we will come to you so that we are not leaving anyone behind. Right now, our data is in. So this is the sector or industry, I'll call it sector. And uh, we have our titles. Row one always has to be the title and of what we are seeing. So I told you that in the data section is where we put our data, but also it's where we tell the data what to read. Let us first look in the preview and see what it's showing. Mm, it's showing a number of things that uh, are not, are quite confusing. So let's go and tell it what to show. So our data had residents, so that's urban and rural, or the sex slash gender, that's male and female. In this data, what do we want to see? Do we want to see the residents of the people in these industries or the gender? Please type in the chat. Let me know what should we visualize. What interests you more? Where people are staying? Emma? Where, mm -hmm, yes. The first response is gender from Peter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. I think I will check it up next time. The 17th response is what we will take or something like that. Thank you, Peter. So we are going to look at just the gender. In, I wouldn't advise us to look at both residents and sex in the same chart because that would be confusing to our readers. We want our visualizations to be simple. So pick one thing. So when we go to the left over here, um, to the right, when we go to the right is where we tell the data what to do. Our labels are in A, are in column A, yes. Our values are in column B and C. So it's B and C. Okay. So now we do not have D and E highlighted. It's out. And uh, okay, let's work with that now. If we had information for pop-ups, we would include the column here. Say if E had more information, that's information for pop-ups. But basically we have told it where the labels are and where the values are. So we shall go back and do the preview. And this is it. So we have our legend, we have male is blue and female is yellow, mustard. And then we have the different sectors. So we have the labels, this is others, service activities, we have education and hotels. Okay, so if this bar chart is not working for us, it is possible to change it. I'd like to see how it works in a column chart. And here we have chart type. So you don't have to go back to the templates and choose the chart again, but we can come to chart type and choose. So right now it's in bar chart grouped. So we can choose column grouped and see if that works. Column, this is how it, it's looking like. Our agriculture and forestry, manufacturing, construction, trade. So this is how it is looking right now. We have the legend still there and uh, male, female. What do you think, which one looks better, the uh, bar or the column? Type it in the chat. And uh, the one with the most answers, we will go with that one. Emma? Yes. There's a comment from Peter uh, saying that you're a bit fast. Mm. But uh, in, in regards to response to which chat um, can go with, they're saying the first response was column from Edgar. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for that. I will slow down. Um, I didn't catch what you said, Eddie. Which chat should we go with? Column. Okay, this time we're going for majority. So uh, is the column chart the majority answer? So fight's the only response. 
<laughs> Come on, please put in a number. At least we go with three. Three will be quorum. So uh, I need quorum, yeah. and and one is I can't get a majority out of one. Actually, all the uh, we have got quorum. Everyone else is typing column. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so we will go with col uh, with a column one for this. Still, chat type you can come under here, and there's so much you can work with. I am going to uh, be intentionally slow. There's so much you can work with depending on what you want your story to tell. If we have it like this, we want to juxtapose female and male. But if the story we want to tell is female and male as a part of a total, then we can look at columns stacked. Let's look at columns stacked. So still on the right, we have column chart grouped, column chart stacked, stacked papers. There are many, but we will look at column stacked. And this is what column stacked does. So it's going to put male and female in one line because we want to see them as part of a total. So that way we see, we can easily see how much higher agriculture is from trade just by looking at it, even though we can still see the breakdown in, in gender or the breakdown in any category we will choose. So this is when we, the story you want to tell is a story of, of the whole, not necessarily a story of the difference in, uh, in the, the different categories we have. So um, should we keep it grouped or stacked? First answer that comes in. Group does stacked for our uh, first, first answer is grouped, second is stacked. So <laughs> we'll go with the first one for now. So we'll take it back to uh, grouped. So not we cannot say that one is, is the correct answer and the other one isn't. It's just that these two people want to, to communicate different things. One wants to show. Uh, clearly that if you looked at trade, which is where I am right now, females are much higher than uh, the males in the sector of trade. And because we are using it as grouped, you can see it easily, which you won't be very, which won't be very easily seen if it were stacked. But if it was stacked, we would see how much different trade is from agriculture. So all answers are correct depending on what you want to show. So we have seen how we input the data, first of all, and then there are a number of things we had said in the anatomy of the chart. So what is missing? For our anatomy of the chart, what do you remember in the chart? Or oh, you can raise your hand and uh, tell us what is our chart missing? Emma, in the chat, yes. uh, Sophie says title and source. Okay. And then uh, Thomas Sitole says yeah. Yeah. Great. So let's let's first uh, go with those ones first. Let's first put the title. Everything we need to work out of is on our right. So let's see what is there. We have a chat type. We have a number of controls. We have colors how we want our bars to look like, which labels we want in there. We have that X axis, Y axis, a number <clears throat> of things. But for that, for what we are working on right now, which is the title, we go to header. Just at the bottom there, you will click to header and it will open up. And we have a number of options there. So I'll go back and get our title, which we already have in our data here. Copying and pasting is your favorite friend. So if we just type in the title area and uh, we paste our title in there, it will, op it will show up in the preview. So the preview area is just for us to see. Everything we are going to be working on is from the right hand side. Our title is in, uh, our source was the next thing which we already had. So, source is there in our data set. This is Uganda Bureau of Statistics. 
and uh, it's 2021. We'll go back to that. So we have put our title in the header, but since the, the source is down, our source goes to the footer, which is just after header information. So footer over here, we have the source name where I'm going to link it, uh, paste it and uh, comma the year. So it's 2021. You want to put the source and the year in there and a URL, very good to direct your, your uh, audience to where you found the data. We have that also in our sheet. Going to find, copy it and paste it in as well. Okay. So it is pasted in. There's uh, so many things in there as well that you can change if you don't want the source to, to be called source and you say from, you change that over here. Or if it's a different language and you're working out of your mother tongue or another international language, you will change source in there. We can put a note at the bottom. You can put a logo, but for today, we're going to stop at the source and the year with the link included. Okay, so if we go back to the header area, which is for our title, you this is the formatting area. We looked at a number of slides on formatting. So alignment, do we want it on the side or in the middle um, center, or we want it to the right? Your choice, whichever works for you, but also what your media house works with. Um, their policies. So a subtitle in here, we can say uh, whatever I need to say. Okay, so that is our subtitle and it will come under, under the title. We shall just take it back to left aligned. And that is our chart so far. We can go and look at a preview above here, just under this uh, little house. We can see how it's going to look like. So if you want to see how it's going to look like on desktop, we shall click on the text desktop. That's how it looks like. We For tablet, how will it look like? That is how it will look like. For mobile, how will it look like? This is what we said about it's being responsive, Flourish being responsive to all the different formats. Okay, we'll go back to desktop. And uh, publishing, we said we'll go to just here, export and publish to make the publishing. But I, I would like to change these colors. They are not working for me. And so we will come to colors over here. And under colors, when you click on that, it will open up. Usually we will uh, color by column because it's male and female. But if we decided to color by row, then we will have the different sectors, but we are going to color by the gender because that's what we chose. To change the color, you click on all these many colors and we go to editing the palette. There are a number of uh, choices that are there. If you wanted to go with the choices that Flourish has, you click on the ones that work for you, but um, we shall edit our colors. So when you come to edit color palette, they'll pop up and then you can choose which colors you want by changing these. So these are called hex codes and you can change that to whatever you want them to be. So uh, males, what do we want the color of the male to be? Please give me the first answer that comes in. <laughs> male? Male? First answer from Osborne is blue. Blue, blue, okay. And female? First answer uh, from, let me see, it's now a competition, <laughs> from Draco <laughs> is red. Okay. Red, red. 
uh, we are going to look for this. Remember, they are called hex codes. So blue hex code. Um, okay, copy. I, I told you, copy and paste is my friend. And I'm going to bring that here and paste. It has changed red hex code. Okay. Really, is this it? Let us see. And let us remember we have about 17,000 reds or yellows. So even just a, a small change in letter will change. It's not a valid color. Okay. Red hex code. Okay. What did I do wrong? Emma, you just missed a, a hash. I missed the hashtag. Thank you. Okay, so by the choice of the people in here, uh, these are the colors we're going with. We are not traditional with pink and blues, but we have pink and red. All the other colors will uh, are insignificant right now because we only have two different options, categories. But if we have more categories, it will read the other colors and you'd have to change them if you wanted. So this is our chat and we're going to publish it. To publish it, we shall go to export and publish. Yeah. And publish to share and embed. If you don't want to publish and you want to download an image, that's where you go or download HTML, but we are publishing this. Publish, they, it's going to ask you if you want to. Yes, we do want to. Uh, or if you require a password, if you want to allow anyone to duplicate your project, you can say, yes, we want to. So anywhere it is or online on the web, someone can be able to duplicate it and change it accordingly. If you have your logo on, on your visualization, I do not recommend you duplicate it allow duplication. So we shall publish and then it will be published. For us to see what our visualization looks like, we are going to go to over here on our link to see how it looks like. For you to put it on your website, in your wherever page you're working out of, you can get an embed code, but we have more options. And uh, iframe you can get an iframe and uh, you can change heights and everything but we shall just look at how it's going to look like if it is put up so that's what we have industry for persons in employment from 14 to 64 years that is it male and female and we have our source over there with the year it's underlined because we linked it to where we found the data because we are the kind who like to attribute and show what we did. So this is it, this is our chat. What I did not tell you is that up here, it's good to name your chat here as well. And I will name it industry in Uganda. You name it whatever you want. And every time you make a change here, this color will change from green to this yellow so that you it's letting you know that your last changes have not been published. I want to mention grid of charts before we go to the next step. When we come to chart type over here, we have single chart. So we have just one chart and it has male and female. But if we wanted grid of charts and we clicked on grid of charts, it will break it up in two different charts. So that's the male, a chart for male in the sector and a chart for female in the sector. So that's what this grid of charts does. You can either have a single chart which shows everything together or grid of charts which is showing them differently. And still this is because you want to tell it differently. If you just Emma? want to see female without uh, interruption. Yes, Edward. There's a question from Osborne. Yes. He says, couldn't we have put the years on the Y axis and industry on X? Okay. 
years on the Y. Oh, look, let me just take it back to single so that we are looking. The, uh, this one doesn't have years, but you mean the numbers on the switching them up. Thank you so much, Osborne, for that question. It's a big reminder because that is transposing. It's switching them up. So for us to do that, we can go and transpose and then we see if that is better and we get your answer. Question answered. So data, we go to our data. This side is where we tell the data what to do. So to transpose in Flourish, if you see this little, this little arrow, that is a double arrow. So it swaps rows and columns. Let's see how that works for us. For this to work, we do not have, we should not have this urban and rural. So I'll just delete that so that it works better. And we have only the data that we are using. So to transpose this data is when we just click there to swap. So you didn't do uh, anything big. That's where we clicked. And let's see if that changed our data. Why is it not changing? Let me just, uh, I want to refresh and see if that will swap them. Okay, yes, we shall go back to the data. And uh, as you can see, when I swapped, I, we did the transpose, our data is still only reading B and C. We have to tell it again that the values are from B all the way to what's that, J. Yes. So we go back here. Our values are B to J. We tell the data to pick that, and it has picked that. So when we go back to our view, this is how, so it has changed. Let me just put it uh, preview in a new window so that we can see it better. Okay, it's coming up. And Osborne will let us know if this is better or not. What do you think, Osborne? Is this what you meant? Just let me know in the chat, but that's how transpose works. You will click one button and then the values you want change. So we were looking at male and female under the industries. And now we are looking at the industries grouped under male and female. Okay. Um, Osborne yes. seems to have, uh, oh, he's back, okay. he's here. Okay, so maybe he'll he'll tell us if this is okay. There's there's so much formatting that can go in in this. We can change that the color of of the, our text, which would be under header, and uh, we can change right now. If you see our uh, x axis is on a tangent, there's a uh, tangent, but it can be flat. It worked in on a tangent when we had so many. Uh, very long labels and so we didn't want them to to cross but if they are not long it's better for them to read that way so we will come to labels and see what you can do show labels on data points do we want to do that or not um how are the bars how are the filters so x-axis what do we want to do with the x-axis this do we want to put um, titles, Y axis. So you can go in there and change a lot and play with a lot. One thing I want to show us is the number formatting. We are currently working with percentages. So instead of putting a percentage on every, every number in our data section, we are going to come to number and date formatting. And here we will tell it that we are working with percentages. Percentage comes after the number, that's a suffix. And uh, if we were working with dollars, dollars come, the dollar sign comes before the number, which would be a prefix. 
So if this, these are now percentages, so we have just added percentage here. We did not have to add it on every entry in our data point. But if these were dollars, we will put the dollar sign before, and that is how it works. Okay, uh, I'll continue taking questions as they come, but we have come to the end of my part of this uh, training. <clears throat> now it's your turn, <clears throat> please. I know some of you already uh, logged in to Flourish. If you didn't, please log in right now. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. You're going to log into Flourish, follow the steps we have uh, gone through and uh, find a data set you want to work with out of the four that we have here. And once you have done that, you create the chart that you want to create, choose any chart that you want and uh, let's work with that. I'll remain here taking questions and the likes. But uh, Edward is going to share this other sheet that we have, where once you have published your visualization, you're going to come and just put it up here for us to uh, celebrate with you and see what you've done. So let us just look at the one I've worked on. This is the one that we have worked on. To get the link, you just go in the, up there in the tab, I think, <laughs> copy copy that come to the sheet that we are going to share uh this has been teamwork so i will not take credit the teamwork viz and you will paste it in there so i'd like to see this being populated in the next uh 10 minutes because i know that's how it's, how much it's going to take just copy paste the work into your flourish into your data section and then put it in here. You can continue the formatting of uh, if you want to change colors and everything. But for now, find choose the data set you want to work with, copy it into Flourish, create a visualization to your liking, and then put up the link in here. Okay, let's start. Please type okay in the chat if you have uh, gotten this. I see people jumping onto this sheet, yay. But please type okay in the chat as you do this so that we know that we are together. Okay, Edward. Uh, Edward, are there any questions that I can be answering as uh, everyone is working on their chats? I'm only seeing... Um... Four okays for now. Okay. In the chat. Awesome, awesome. Please keep those okays coming. But even if you have not typed the okay, you can just go ahead into Flourish and, uh, and create your chat. At any point, if you have a question, you can raise your hand or you can put it into the chat, but uh, we are here looking forward to see what you are going to create. You have a question from Guambale. Okay. How do we put horizontal grids or lines to keep the user accurate? Okay, that's a very good one. I'll go back to our place of formatting. So grids, um, as I said earlier, Flourish keeps changing so much and it will change. But in this, in our uh, dashboard, in our right-hand side is where everything is found. So that should be under layout, but we will just keep trying if it's not in layout. So layout, we have fonts width, margins, borders. And if you want to put borders in there, <clears throat> okay. Then we will look at the axis, x-axis. Uh, we'll start with y-axis. Configure default axis title, ticks and labels. That's where we want to look. 
So right now, grid lines, that's what uh, the question we are answering. Are the grid lines on or off? Right now they are on, we can see them. If we put them off, we can't see them. If we put them on, they are uh, light. Okay, let's first put grid lines on in the X axis as well before I show you something else. X axis, grid lines, let's put them on. Okay, so there they are, but they are quite faint. Let us change the color. So everything can be styled in Flourish. That's one of the reasons we recommend it. There's so much you can customize. Right now, styling, we can make the color darker. Who knows? Oh, here we can use RGB or HSL or the hex codes. So who knows the code for black? Black and white are the easiest codes. I know someone who knows codes in their head, off head, they'll tell you the hex code of purple or something like that. But uh, 0000000 000 is black <laughs> for hex. And then F, 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 F is white. They're only six numbers. So if we make them darker, we'll be able to see them. And uh, that's for X axis. Let's look at Y. Please, people, if you're working on your own, just continue. This We're just talking about formatting. You don't need to see it. You can uh, listen in while you're working. So our grid lines for this styling for the Y axis, let's also make it the darkest we can. I know hex codes. I don't know uh, the other ones, but they, as you have seen earlier, you can easily find them. So now you can see that. So I'm, I hope that this is what you were asking about, but now it's clearer. If you feel that it's going to uh, take away attention from the chat, please make them light, a lighter color from this black, which we have gone with, which is the darkest. You can change the color for the numbers here. If they're quite faint, you can change it uh, to a darker color as well. So uh, that is how you find grid lines. A lot of this is going to be, you're going to try and uh, go and see where is it, where can I find it? But you will find that it's in there. Right now, these are percentages. I'm going to take it back from dollars to percentages. So, um, and it seems like they're really high, but remember a percentage is a number out of 100. So if we want to actually show how it is out of 100, then we shall go to our y-axis and tell it to have the maximum at 100. See here, it has no maximum, but we want the maximum out of 100 so that we have a real picture of the percentage because percentage is out of 100. So that this is how it would look like. We would see, have a better picture that less than 50% of the people are in uh, agriculture and less than 10% are in uh, transport and storage, as opposed to the other time where you could have thought that everyone is in agriculture because agriculture was reaching the top most. So, uh, those are some of the things, a lot in Flourish, but just if you go under each one of these options that we have and you see what is there and you change it up, you can uh, know. Always remember to republish when you make changes so that your changes are captured. I'm going in our sheet to see if we have anyone else who has put up their chat. Not yet, please send in your, your chats. For a start, just uh, do copy the data, put it in, publish. Then you can start putting in the titles and all the formatting. So that should be about five minutes to copy the data set you have chosen, choose the template and paste. Any question, um, Ed Edward? 
Uh, for now, not as yet. Okay. At least I we are sure that four of you who typed in okay or more are, are working on it. So we are looking forward, looking forward to that. I'm going to put a better subtitle than whatever I need to say. Remember titles are under header. Our subtitle will read, both genders are represented in each sector. Okay, yes. Both genders are represented in each sector, albeit at different percentages. Full stop. Okay, so this is how our every time, every time we change something and, and republish. If we reload our chart, the changes will appear. Okay, so there we have our grid lines that can give more direction to, to what we are looking at. Keep questions coming and any questions, maybe just not flourish, but generally visualizations, just keep them coming. And I will be looking in our sheet, yay, to see the people who are working and what they have put up. It would be amazing and great if each one of us on the call could do that so that we have, um, we go away with what we learned. Remember what we said is that if the objective of today so that you spent your one hour and a half to two hours wisely is that you will go away knowing, being able to create a, chart, a flourish chart and uh, formatting it to what you want, to what you need. So yes, please let's have some evidence of, of what we have worked on. I see 41. Uh, uh, 15 people in uh, 15 participants. So I'll just have that. Can we have seven finished charts in our sheet before we close today? But I'm taking questions as you continue working for those who are doing the work. And for those who are not doing the work, I'll take uh, any other, any questions for when you start working with Flourish. Emma, I have a question. Yes. Um, have you done any data visualization on a mobile phone? And if yes, um, which tool would you recommend? That's my question. Okay, so you're saying uh, using the phone to create? Yes, using the phone to create. Okay, um, I, I will recommend Flourish again because I have used Flourish on mobile as well. And um, you see, I am going from one place to another, copying and pasting, and it's just better when you're on a desktop and you have all these windows open. But that is also possible when you use... Uh, when you use a phone, so you just know where what you need is, and then you can copy and paste it. I would recommend Flourish. Flourish is not the only visualization tool that we use. We use Data Wrapper as well because it has uh, almost all the packs that Flourish has, and I think Data Wrapper would work well too if you're using mobile. But uh, yes, those two are the ones that I'd recommend for data visualizations like this for charts, because it's what I have used. Um, as I said earlier, there are lots of tools and we are showcasing what we have used and uh, that has proven to be true for us. So Flourish and 
data wrapper. Okay, Sylvia, thank you so much. Sylvia's chat is up. We will not look at it now. In five minutes, we are going to look at all the chats that are up there, but please keep them coming. So uh, Sylvia, while we wait for the others to put up their chats, so maybe you can uh, keep formatting, adding in a little this and a little that. Okay, five more minutes and then we'll be looking at the charts that we have. Please put up your charts. We have one out of three so far. One out of four, we had four okays when we started out, but I'm hoping for at least seven, seven um, charts coming out of, of today. While we wait, I'll just be repeating uh, a number of things I've said we have to, Remember two things in Flourish. We have the preview section and the data section. The data section is where you tell the data, you put your data and, and tell it what to read. So that's data section. And then the preview section is where you see how it's looking like. So that if it's not looking how you want it to look like, if it's not communicating what you need it to communicate well, then you can change a number of things. So that's the first thing to remember about Flourish. There's two sections of data and preview. The second thing to remember about Flourish is that the right-hand side is where we are working out of. Whether you're in the data side or whether you are in the preview side, the right-hand side is where we're going to find formatting or we're going to tell the data what to do. That's what we should remember something. Uh, it is quite easy to use. It is very user-friendly. That's why we, we really recommend Flourish. It's user-friendliness that you can have a chat out. Um, if you do not want to do uh, lots of formatting, you will have your chat out in five minutes. Okay, we have two more minutes before we, we look at the chats that have been created. So please, if you're working, just uh, right now, publish and put your link up. Then we will look at it and see uh, even if it's still a work in progress, we'll be able to see it. So if, if you sign into Flourish and have tried to work with the data and tried to um, upload it, please publish whatever you have. And then we will look at it in two minutes. Any questions coming up? Edward? No questions yet. No questions? None yet. Okay. Sure, I will just, uh, I can feel space any anytime. Yes, so now I just want to remind us of the, template section. Let us not forget, you don't have to start from scratch. They, there are templates that are already pre-populated with data to guide you. And uh, we have donuts. We had not even talked about donuts. So uh, <clears throat> donuts and pies. So we had donut charts in there, pie charts in there. We saw that the line, bars and columns any and of this first section any of them can be chosen when you are already when you already picked any one of them you can change to another we have the maps for geographical data and uh, any data that is uh, in line with location we have scatter plots we have maps and sliders we have this hierarchy one where we can group have in groups that include stream apps and the likes. We have a number of rest charts. So this is an interactive uh, version. So rest charts, any that you can, uh, that work for you. And they, they keep adding more and more. So when you have the data that you're working with, you will come to the template side and see which one would work best. We have some that are for networks, so it will connect one thing to another. 
and those are the sun cares. And uh, I talked about the sliders that can show a before and after. And there are so many templates to use. We have election and parliament charts over there that can be used to show. Emma? Yes. Uh, Thomas uh, has challenges pasting the data set onto Flourish. Okay, uh, Thomas, can you unmute to tell me what challenge exactly you're facing? Because you have to first delete the data that is in there. That's one thing. And then just uh, paste. Can you unmute and tell me which, at what stage you can't, um, you're finding a problem. Yeah, okay. it, 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 it looks like when I, I try to paste, it's not pasting, mm. I, 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 I don't know why. So initially I thought that maybe to just paste like we're doing when we're showing us okay. uh, during the session, but now trying to paste, it's not, it's, it's not pasting. Oh, okay, how did you copy? I, Maybe. I highlighted. How, how did you highlighted, copy it? I highlighted and mm. clicked copy manually. Can that work? Or maybe that's where I'm getting it wrong. Emma? Okay, what do you mean copy manually? Like I, I like you I, write, you clicked write and selected copy, or you yes, did control. I, did. I, I first of all highlighted the data set, then clicked write, mm. then I mean right clicked mm. and then clicked copy. Then now when coming okay. to my flourish and pasting on the, mm. on the on the on the worksheet, it's not pasting. Okay, can you open up a Word document or an email somewhere so that you try and paste there? Maybe you did not copy it. Sometimes when you use the method you have done, you mm -hmm. will right click and, and then it will the highlight will come out. So first try and yes. see if, if you can paste it somewhere else. Let me try. Let me try to do that. Have you tried? Let me try and then... Okay, yes, try today. and do that because... Uh, mm. Emma? Oh, sir. Someone was saying something, yes. Yes, uh, alternatively, you can also uh, temporarily stop sharing screen and he shares screen so that you can ably see how you can guide him. Let me see if I can do Okay, that. We, we can do that. So let's wait for him to come back okay. and uh, let us know if, if that worked. Okay, looking that, at uh, our time, we are going to see what Sylvia has done. Yeah, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the web document is pasting. So let me go back and see if maybe it will paste again. On the web document, it is pasted. So I'll go back. Okay, to... do you want to share? Can you share a screen? Are you in position to share a screen? Let me see if I can be able to do that. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I, I can share screen. Okay. My screen. Just a second, Thomas, and we activate that. It's okay, now you can share. Okay. Is it... Okay, right. so while Thomas is, is uh, trying to share screen, let us remember that if, if the copy and paste is uh, shaky, there's still the option of uh, uploading data. So if you can download any of the data for this, just troubleshooting for if this happens again. So if you, you that where, wherever the data is, you download it and then you'll just upload it onto Flourish from the upload button that we had in the data section. And that should work. Um, but Thomas, I am not seeing your screen. Uh, are you able to see it now? No. Any change? Not yet. No. Um, Eddie, can you see it? No, I can't see it. 
Okay. Has Thomas, have you selected the, the screen to share? After yes. Share screen. Okay, um, I don't know why we cannot see your screen. That would be Edward's, uh, <laughs> his, his, our technical. <laughs> I wouldn't know why that, but um, please try and, and download the data. Now that you can paste it in, in, uh, in some, somewhere else, that means you have copied it well but I do not know why you are unable to, to paste it on Flourish. I'm going to share my screen again so that we look at Flourish in the data section. As I said, there's the upload part here, but we sh you should be able to also right click and upload file. So if you have put it down, if you have put it on your machine, right click and upload. But when you click in any section of, of this data area, you come in and delete. Uh, I hope you're trying it again, Thomas. So if you come in and delete, and then you put your cursor in, let's say the first cell, then you control and paste. That should be able to work. That's what I was doing. Let me try that again. And okay, try it one more time. Control V. Okay. So while while we are waiting on on um, while we're waiting on on uh, Thomas, we are looking right now at what Sylvia has done. Okay, so what Sylvia did is she went into Flourish and she got a template, which was this map. And then she put in our world in data as the title. She went to header and, and worked with the title. I don't think that uh, she uploaded any data. Okay. So if you did anything else, Sylvia, let us know. But this is what Sylvia has done from her account, you see, by Sylvia Matovo. And she, she got a template of the maps and she did some formatting there. So good, Sylvia. Okay, I will just take uh, three more minutes. If anyone else has been working on, on a chat and... Uh, have done something, please publish and share the, share the link. In three minutes, I will hand over back to, to Edward. I'll take any questions or comments. Um, Emma, so Sylvia is explaining further. Mm, okay. She up, she uploaded data set for uh, population under one from countries only until Albania. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, let's look at that again. Awesome. So, uh, what Sylvia did. I thought that she had worked with that data set and then I wasn't seeing anything in, in Africa, but I see what she did now because that means all we are looking at is data from the countries that are starting with A. Um, okay. She states, choose a, choose a map to see the distribution. Uh, Sylvia, do you... Are you okay with sharing screen and showing us? Um, sorry, let me, let me just try to explain. Okay. 
the the data set is like you said is really big yeah it has so many countries and so many figures mm. so i only chose the first two columns the way you're displaying them to see the population currently and mm. the population under one from 1952 to 2021 so i just wanted to see how it distributes it and i chose a map specifically to see like across the world how the population under one is distributed over the years. I was still trying it out when I pasted because nobody had pasted anything. So I'll I'll keep trying to see since it's a different data set from the one you worked with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th thank you so much, Sylvia. And thank you for, for explaining that. It, it is a large data set and it has a lot that it is covering, for example, the ages. But what you see with this format is we have the map what, what is really good with this map that you've chosen, the chart you've chosen, is we have the map showing areas, but we also have links to it, a uh, line chart that shows you how much uh, the ups and downs in whatever data set that she has chosen, which is uh, but population under one, population under one. So thank you, Sylvia. Let's see if anyone else has. So no one else has put up. So extra, extra thank you, Sylvia. But at this point, I want to hand back over to Edward. If there are no questions, Edward, uh, back to you. We have come to the end of our session. Okay. Maybe before that, I'm seeing uh, Sylvia's added further in the chat that it's very interactive and it links to Canva. Yes, so Canva just, uh, they just got into a collaboration at the beginning of this year. So it li links to Canva, you can have it in, and yet Canva does like uh, Instagram posts and the likes. So there's a lot to work with Canva Flourish and the interactivity, including the user friendliness and the ease of use. So yes, thank you so much, Sylvia. Edward. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Emma, for gracing us with your knowledge and expertise during this session. I would also like to thank um, all the participants who have been on the call for actively participating and to urge each one of us to continue practicing with the tool and also very many other data visualization tools that are available for us. Uh, we shall avail this recording uh, after the session on like an email on our social media channels and also in the, on, on the WhatsApp and Telegram group. So be sure to at least access the recording from one of those avenues. Uh, we shall also be communicating during the week, the session that we shall have uh, coming next Friday. So please uh, also keep on the lookout. Uh, once again, uh, we are conducting these trainings in partnership with the Department of Journalism and Communication at Makere University, where we also uh, do short courses. If you're interested to apply for any, uh, feel free to click on the link. It has been shared in the chat and also to join any of the WhatsApp or Telegram groups where we frequently share training materials, uh, resources, and even opportunities. If there is no further comment or supplement, I would like to uh, thank our facilitator once again, thank all of us who have been on the call and to wish you a good evening and a blessed weekend.